You're plundering the justice system. You're plundering the legal system. You're using the law to commit crimes against the body politic. That is exactly where we are today with these investigations, with these prosecutions, with, with New York stealing, literally stealing half a billion dollars from Donald Trump because he decides to, re, to run again for president of the United States under a phony law. The law, the name of the book, is really a series of essays. He says, it's impossible to introduce into society a greater change and a greater evil than this. The conversation of the law into an instrument of plunder. What are the consequences of such a perversion? It would require volumes to describe them all. Thus, we must content ourselves with pointing out the most striking. In the first place, it erases from everyone's conscience the distinction between justice and injustice. And that's where I wanted to bring us. Look what they're doing to Donald Trump. Now, he's talking about not just property here. He's talking about the law. He's not just talking about plundering people's values and their income and their property. He's talking about plunder, period. You're plundering the justice system. You're plundering the legal system. You're using the law to commit crimes against the body politic. That is exactly where we are today with these investigations, with these prosecutions, with with New York stealing, literally stealing half a billion dollars from Donald Trump because he decides to, re, to run again for president of the United States under a phony law. You look at Atlanta, you not only have a corrupt district attorney, you have a RICO statute that doesn't even apply, a mob statute. So they reach the outer edges, beyond the outer edges of the law to rewrite the law. That's his point. To do what? to plunder, to empower yourself. You look at the case in Washington, D.C. He's not charged with insurrection. He's not charged with sedition. I've said it a billion times. He's not even charged with encouraging violence. He's charged with laws that have been dusted off and thrown at him. The Ku Klux Klan Act of 1871. You know how hard you had to look to find that? The Enron Act. That has absolutely nothing to do with what took place on January 6th, it's a law for executives and corporations that says if you anticipate being investigated, getting subpoenas by Congress, even though you haven't yet, you may not destroy your records. What the hell does that have to do with January 6th? Nothing. And then the third law they use is a law that has been used for decades against federal contractors who misapply funds. What does that have to do with January 6th? Nothing. That's his point. The Espionage Act of 1917, it has never been used against a president, an ex-president, a president moving from president to ex-president. Hell, it's never been used against a secretary of state, Hillary Clinton. Wasn't used against Joe Biden as a senator, as a vice president, as a private citizen. Just Trump. Plunder. That's his point. You're destroying your country, you're destroying society when this idea of plunder, whether it's economic plunder, whether it is the plundering of justice and the rule of law, it is a disease, it's a cancer that's very, very difficult to stop. And he's saying, really, the only way to stop it is when everybody suffers from it. By then, you've got your totalitarian regime. Or as Karl Marx put it in the Communist Manifesto, a period of despotism. The problem is it never ends. It's a long period. In the first place, he says, it erases from everyone's conscience the distinction between justice and injustice. No society can exist unless the laws are respected to a certain degree. The safest way to make laws respected is to make them respectable. When law and morality contradict each other, the citizen has the cruel alternative of either losing his moral sense or losing his respect for the law. You know, I also wrote this, I believe, in Liberty and Tyranny. If judges expect us to respect their rulings, which they claim are based on the law, then they have to respect the law in the first place. When you have activist left-wing judges like three of them on the Supreme Court, like so many of them in the district court, 
You expect people to comply with your orders. Why? It's the law. You expect people to behave in court or you'll hold them in contempt. Why? It's the law. In fact, people are there facing you, facing the government, a prosecutor, perhaps a jury. Why? Because they're accused of violating the law. So if you yourself show no respect for the Constitution, you're the judge and you're the prosecutor. How do you expect the citizens to have respect for you and your decisions or any desire to comply with them when you have no respect for them and the rule of law and have no intention of complying with that? That's the problem. And I wrote about it in Liberty and Tyranny. He goes on. These two evils are of equal consequence and it would be difficult for a person to choose between them. Do you choose the law or morality? The nature of law is to maintain justice. That's the purpose of law. Otherwise, why have it? It's the purpose of the civil society. I'll go further. The purpose of the law is not merely to maintain justice. It's to allow the civil society to exist, to function. We have anarchy. You have the rule of the jungle, which is what we're getting now. This is so much the case that in the minds of the people, law and justice are one and the same thing. There is in all of us a strong disposition to believe that anything lawful is also legitimate. This belief is so widespread that many persons have erroneously held that things are just because, well, the law makes them so. Listen to this. In order to make plunder appear just and sacred to many consciences, it is only necessary for the law to decree and sanction it. How many times have we, Trump's not above the law. And you've got to say, wait a minute, this look, no, no. The law is moral. Why? Because it's the law. Trump broke the Ku Klux Klan Act of 1871. But wait a minute, this guy brought it up. It's the law. He thinks he's above the law. He thinks he's above a fraud statute that shows no fraud, that requires no fraud. He thinks he's above a RICO statute that doesn't even apply. He thinks he's above these four charges on January 6th that have no application to January 6th. He thinks he's above the Espionage Act. This is the law. He's been charged 91 times. Are you telling me he's innocent of all the charges? How many times have we heard that? You get the point? So in order to make plunder appear just and sacred to many consciences, it is only necessary for the law to decree and sanction it. Slavery, restrictions, monopoly. The Espionage Act, the Phony Fraud Act, the RICO Statute, the Klan Act. Well, they find defenders not only among those who profit from them politically, but also among those who suffer from them. Because you see, what he's trying to point out there is it's either too late or you're going down the path of no return if you don't reverse course. So it's not only defended by those who are evil and immoral. It's defended by others who go along and in the end will suffer from them. For more, sign up for Levin TV.